Hello friends, my name is Doug. Welcome to Third Style Garage. Today's episode is going to be about welding and my learning curve and challenges as a guy with a welder, not as a welder. There is a big difference between the two. Um, this is a resume or scratch paper of welding learning. I'm getting better, but I've got a ways to go. Um, if I can, I'll put a couple still pictures in here, which show some of the work. Uh, behind me is the 66 Mustang I'm working on. Next door is the Beetle that my friend Dale and I are working on, a 66 Beetle convertible named Hendrick. Uh, it needs a lot of sheet metal weld welding and patching and, and some significant body work. So I really need to hone in my ability to weld thin wall sheet metal. And most of my life I've welded eighth inch metal and thicker, which has been fairly easy. So there's a Facebook page um, and an online group called Fitzy Fabrications. Great resource if you want to learn about welding, particularly rust repair. I encourage you to go check that out. Uh, post on the Facebook page said, here's what my welds are looking like. They're standing a little too tall. They're a little too proud. Sometimes they don't penetrate enough. Sometimes they penetrate too much and blow through. Um, I don't want to heat it up too much so it warps. For those of you that have done this before, give me your top tips of the trade and things you've learned. Um, so in this episode, I'm going to go through that list. I'm going to show you how I've applied them. And hopefully at the end, we'll see what the end result is like. First of all, let me show you what we're working on. Dale's on the other side of the wall doing a little sandblasting. We can show you the project. So here's my project for, uh, for now. I'm working on the quarter latch pillar brace that goes right there. It's this guy, the old one came off. Uh, Dale is next door working on sandblasting the beetle. I'm not gonna go through there because it's a mess. He's uh, working on removing some of the Bondo because there's a lot of patching that needs to happen. Okay, from that Facebook group I posted on, uh, I came up with 10, perfectly worked out great, 10 tips that I gleaned from the wisdom of the group um, that I'm gonna apply and see how they work. Hopefully they'll help you as well. Um, so here we go, top 10 welding things I've learned. Number one, your welding tip. By the way, I'm using a Lincoln Weld Pack 100. Uh, it's a little 110 welder. I've had it for like 25, 30 years. It's awesome, about 25 years. Uh, it's worked great for me. It's a little MIG welder. Uh, I converted it, oh, you can see the tank right there. I converted it to gas shielded a couple years ago. Um, highly recommend that. So tip number one, your wire tip. Um, not this shield, but this copper tip should be recessed inside your welding shield by an eighth of an inch. If you can see mine is in maybe a full quarter of an inch deeper or an eighth of an inch deeper than it needs to be about a quarter of an inch. So I am going to shorten this thing by about an eighth of an inch. My shield is now shorter. I also wire brushed it just to clean it up a bit. You can see that the tip is maybe a little bit, I may have ground a touch uh, more off than I needed to, although my welling tip on the inside isn't real tight yet. Um, my goal was an eighth of an inch. I've got at least uh, closer to that. So that's one. Tip number one. Tip number two. Check the polarity on your welder. Let's go do that. All right, let's check polarity of the welder. So output polarity, this is on the little sticker on the inside of my Lincoln Electric welder. When I bought it, it was gasless flux core 
which is DC negative welding. And there is a wire coming off of the gun and there's a wire that goes to the wire. Uh, so it connects the circuit from the gun to the welding wire. And I have no idea why, but that polarity is opposite for gasless or when you do MIG, um, which is I think metal inert gas wiring, could be wrong on that. It's the tank here of gas. Um, I've got argon CO2 mix. The polarity needs to change. Um, so you can see on this one, the two go parallel to each other. And on this one, they cross. So the we're doing the MIG. The wire that comes from the gun goes to the negative. So that's this wire here goes to the negative and the positive wire goes to the drive wheel. So check, we've got the polarity right. All right, tip number three, check the tip size to match it to your welding wire. Let's see what I've got. When I bought this welder, I think it had 0.035 wire in it, if I remember correctly. Um, that's what I used for, here we go. Gasless flux core 0.035 inner shield wire that has the flux in it. When I switch to MIG welding, I switch to the 030 welding wire. Um, so the 0.35 is 0.9 millimeter, the 0.30 is 0.8 millimeter. Um, and I was still having trouble welding thin, so I went to the smallest wire you can get, which is the 0.025 thousandths of an inch, which is 0.6 millimeter. So you can see here it's 0.025, it's the ER70S-6, the 6 stands for 0.6 millimeter. Um, so that's the wire that I'm using, and I need to match the tip to that. So the tip is, focus, um, the tip is the part of the gun that the wire comes out of. So here are three of them. This is the original one that I had on the welder when I bought it. And that's what I used for the gasless flux wiring. And you can see it's 0.035, which is the 0.9 millimeter. And that is the size hole on the end. So I need to check and make sure that what I'm using is correctly sized. So this is the one I've been using for quite a while. If you see there right next to, right above my thumbnail, there's a 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So that would be for the 0 0.025. And you can see next to this, it is a smaller hole. Now, I don't know how long these things last. So, the one on the left is uh, has been used for quite a while. The one on the right is fairly new. So this one is the one that is new and unused. So I'm gonna put that on my welder and uh, hopefully that helps gives me better control of the wire. Um, and better electrical contact and less moving around. And uh, so we'll make that change next. So the new, brand new, correctly sized welding tip goes on. I'm gonna just snug it up tightly, not too tightly, just lightly snug it up. Then I have my slightly shortened shield, copper shield that goes on there. And that should be better. Uh, all right, let's see what's next. 
that was tip number three. Let's check the size tip for clarity. Tip number four, trim the wire. When you weld, let me turn this on a second. The wire comes out the end like such. Usually what I do is uh, I just weld and then when I'm done, you've got about that much wire sticking out and there may be a small little blob on the end. Um, but I just start welding again on it. And what was recommended to me was to take a pair of welding cutters or clippers or diagonal cutters or something and uh, always cut into that tip so you've got about an eighth inch of wire sticking out. And there's two reasons for that, or maybe more, I don't know. One is that way you've got a consistent distance the more consistent you have set up, the more control you have, the, the better you'll be able to do. The second one is that gives a nice raw, fresh edge to that wire, so you'll get a good consistent spark. There were a bunch of comments of people that recommended doing this. <clears throat> there were a few honest people that said, I used to do that all the time. I don't do it anymore. I don't need to. I've gotten better. My theory is, I'm still learning at welding. When I'm welding really thin metal, I think I'm gonna cut this off every single time and see if that helps. Maybe after I do 50 patches on the car, that won't be needed um, anymore, but uh, we will see. So that's the next tip. All right, welding tip number five. You want a really clean surface. I assume that if I had uh, cleaned it with a wire brush, um, I don't know where my wire brush went. Wow, edit that out. I assume if I had cleaned it with a wire brush and a grinder, that, uh, that would be plenty clean for welding and, and, uh, for fine welding and what several people suggested is that's not the case if you're doing thin wire it needs to strike an arc really fast and even and i did notice that it would mine would kind of go and then i would get that nice smooth sizzle but i want to do really short fast welds and so um, a couple guys suggested hit it with a da sander dual action sander other people are like careful because you don't want to thin the metal. If you thin the metal, um, it's going to be much easier for it to bleed through. So really, really lightly sanding it or doing it in something that won't take the metal off. And then wiping it clean with acetone. Um, just to make sure there's no oil, no grease on it. Um, so you, you get the best control with your weld and the, the best weld possible. So that's the next tip. All right, let's keep moving forward. Welding tip number six, you need a clean ground. So reference number five, that needs to be true of your grounding spot as well. Sand it, um, clean it with acetone, um, and then put your grounding clamp on it. But that also means that your grounding clamp's gotta be in really good shape. Now, my ground wire is not quite long enough. Um, I took this thing apart maybe a year ago and uh, cleaned it. And uh, I think it's time to do that again. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, that's number six. Good ground. I've got it all cleaned up, put back together. These are all shiny. Um, I also, 
put a little dielectric silicone compound in there um, just to help keep the connections cleaner. Um, got also a little bent up, so straighten it out. The other thing is not all these connections were super snug and tight, so uh, they are now. So that was number six. Number seven is the tip that when you weld thin metal and you're filling a gap, go with as absolutely high a heat as you can without blowing through. So if your welds are, are sticking up too high, really proud, you're not getting up penetration, you need to go up in your heat or up in the amperage. So um, I was trying to do it as low as I could because I was so worried about burn through. So as I practice, I'm gonna go up in heat as high as I can. That's number seven. Number eight, make sure you have enough gas. Um, me being the natural uh, stretch a dollar as far as I can, my tank was getting low. I have a flow meter on it right here, which I had checked and it was running, uh, I think at the proper flow rate. Um, mine is in uh, liters per minute. And I think I need to be up in the eight to 10 range which is where I was, but as my tank was running low, I was falling towards the bottom of that. Nah, maybe could start to see a little bit of soot and crud building up on the well, but not a whole lot. But I wanted to get as much out of my tank as I could. After reading these, uh, knowing the tank was getting low anyways, I brought it down, paid 101 bucks. Uh, swapped it out and got a new one, so I should be sure that I have got good, good gas flow. That's number eight. Number nine, practice. The most common comment there was practice, get better at it, practice, keep trying, you'll get better at it. I'm assuming these are probably people that have gone through the same learning curve that I have. And so I just need to keep working at it. And when it doesn't go well, cut it back out and do it again. And number 10, I don't know, but other people are gonna post some really good comments below. So to get your 10th hint, read the comments below and we'll see how it goes and learn from other people as well. So please post your comment. So that is your top 10 tips. Uh, the next thing I'm going to work on is setting up the settings on the welder to learn where's optimum. Uh, there's a video on YouTube, uh, Fitzy, F-I-T as in Tom, Z as in Zebra, E-E. -E. Um, he's great. He's entertaining. I could listen to him talk all day long. Um, he's got, he's head and shoulders better than I am. He, he put together a video. Uh, if you Google and YouTube or do a search, how to set up your MIG welder for sheet metal. Um, I'm going to follow the steps that he posted in that video to go through the different settings to dial in for what works best for you. I'm going to do that next. I'll show you a little bit of the results. Um, I'm not going to have you watch it because you should be watching his video instead of mine. So that's my next step. I'm going to do that off camera and be back in a moment. First run of the welder after the improvements is done. I think it's running better, but I, I really need to get to some actual sheet metal repair on the car, which probably won't be for a week or two before I'll really know if it's significantly better. Um, couple things I did notice. One is my plan to snip off the end of the wire before each spot weld. If I'm doing pulse welding where I'm just zapping a little bit each time, I don't know if I have the patience for that. Um, and the welding I did here, the practice welding, um, I'm not sure if I would have noticed a significant difference. It did seem to run a little bit more smoothly. I don't know if that's the cleaner metal or the better ground or what it is, a new tip, the welding. 
it was nicer to be able to see the tip better. Uh, I think I had a little better control of it that way. Um, I hope you've watched that Fitzy video that I referenced. If not, do that next. That's what I just finished doing. Let me turn the camera around and show you the results. So my welder is a Lincoln Electric Weld Pack 100 for the heat. It just has four settings, A, B, C, D. D is the hottest. Um, I, if I'm welding eighth inch, quarter inch thick steel, I would do that. Otherwise, basically A and B. B is probably my most common one. The more I learn, I used to try frequently with A. And then this is my infinitely adjustable wire feed. So what I did was I put it on A and then did a weld at one a weld at two, a weld at three. Uh, and I welded on a piece of sheet metal from my Mustang. So it's the actual sheet metal size I'll be working with. Here is my um, heat setting A, wire speed one. So that would have been A all the way down to one. And it was way too slow, just spit and spattered. Um, wire speed two, um, jumped around a bit, looked slightly better. And then I got to speeds three and four. And I think those are some of my best looking welds. Um, you can see a little bit once you get to five and uh, four-ish to five, started sitting up quite high uh, building up in six it started pushing back on the gun and spitting and sputtering and building up way too much so I really think speeds three and four probably somewhere in there is the sweet spot then I went to heat setting B one was ridiculous two just kind of balled up and glowed on the end I really needed to get up to three before it started really burning in um, very little buildup. Uh, it was a constant crackle, um, but it, it did not add enough really material. Um, four is where it got too much metal, too hot, and it blew through. But if I kind of pulse weld it on the end, uh, it did better. Five was decent. This was a kind of a pulse welding a bit. Six blew through um, and it was really too fast a wire speed for it. So really in this three, probably more four or five range for B setting uh, was best for me. In Fitzy's video, he talked about welding sheet metal. He puts it on the same wire speed and he uses the same settings for A, B, or C in terms of the heat. I'm not finding that to be true for my welder. It seemed like when I went from setting A, wire speed 3, 4-ish was good, but when I went to B, it was more 5, 6. When I went to C, it was more 7, 8. Um, so I think I need to play around with that. But what I'm definitely going to do when welding, particularly butt joined sheet metal joints, um, is I'm going to keep my wire speed low. And if I can do it in heat setting B instead of A, I'm going to try that. And then I'm going to use uh, all the tips earlier in this video. So I hope this helps you some if you're following along and trying to learn. Uh, if you're just following the adventure of Third Stall Garage with some car restorations, um, hopefully you found this entertaining. Uh, thanks for being part of it. I'd love to hear your thoughts below. Thanks for being part of this. Uh, there may be a Subaru project coming up. Stay tuned. Thanks. Be kind to one each other. Have a great day. Thank you all. Good night.